A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, realize that it is those who have faith who are children of Abraham. Scripture which saw in advance that God would justify the Gentiles by faith foretold the good news to Abraham, saying, Through you shall all the nations be blessed. Consequently, those who have faith are blessed along with Abraham who had faith. For all who depend on works of the law are under a curse, for it is written, Cursed be everyone who does not persevere in doing all the things written in the book of the law. And that no one is justified before God by the law is clear, for the one who is righteous by faith will live, but the law does not depend on faith. Rather, the one who does these things will live by them. Christ ransomed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed be everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might be extended to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus, so that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart in the company and assembly of the just. Great are the works of the Lord, exquisite in all their delights. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. Majesty and glory are his work, and his justice endures forever. He has won renown for all his wondrous deeds. Gracious and merciful is the Lord. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. He has given food to those who fear him. He will forever be mindful of his covenant. He has made known to his people the power of his works, giving them the inheritance of the nations. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. When Jesus had driven out a demon, some of the crowd said, By the power of Beelzebub, the prince of demons, he drives out demons. Others, to test him, asked him for a sign from heaven. But he knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be laid waste, and house will fall against house. And if Satan is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say it is by Beelzebul that I drive out demons. If I then drive out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your own people drive them out? Therefore they will be your judges. But if it is by the finger of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his palace, his possessions are safe. But when one stronger than he attacks and overcomes him, he takes away the armor on which the other one relied and distributes the spoils. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. When an unclean spirit goes out of someone, it roams through arid regions searching for rest, but finding none, it says, I shall return to my home from which I came. But upon returning, it finds it swept clean and put in order. Then it goes and brings back seven other spirits more wicked than itself, who move in and dwell there, and the last condition of that man is worse than the first. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise 
particularly in the letter to the Galatians, but uh, also a bit more expansively in the letter to the Romans, Paul tries to elaborate on why the law is not as important as faith. And he does it in a series of very interesting rabbinical style interpretations of scripture. Okay, So that right off the bat, he insists that faith has to take precedence over the works of the law because Abraham was justified by faith, he says, before the law existed. Okay, So he says that it takes precedence because of that. So that's one point he makes. Then he starts talking about who is and who isn't cursed. And he starts by saying, you're cursed if you do not observe everything in the law. And his point is, no one observes everything in the law. No one has ever observed everything in the law. Therefore, everyone is cursed. And he's going to establish and expand on that greatly in the first few chapters of the letter to the Romans, much more systematically. Everyone is cursed. So now what? Well, we also know from the law that anyone who hangs on a tree, who's executed, lynched, put up there, whatever, is cursed. But Jesus was crucified, and that's the metaphor for being hung on a tree. But we know he's not cursed. He rose from the dead. He's the Messiah. So it could only possibly be that he took our curse on himself and liberated us now so that we can be the spiritual children of Abraham. This is the logic of St. Paul. It's not exactly what you would call the most straightforward use of some of the biblical passages, but it is a very rabbinical use. It's the way the scripture would have been used back in the day. And there's nothing wrong with our realizing that, you know what, as one person said, uh, I think it was Raymond Brown, in fact, he said, it would be a very arrogant person who thought that you could not ever get to a truth of the scripture unless you used my technique. You know, so Paul doesn't use what we would call historical uh, criticism, okay? He doesn't. It's, it's, it's not part of his drill. It doesn't mean that it's not an important form of exegesis and interpretation and that we learn fundamental truth about ourselves and about Jesus Christ as a result. So, as Paul tells the Galatians, it is your faith in Christ that is effecting your salvation now because he, by becoming a curse, took the curse from you. And we can thank God for the presence of Jesus Christ in our hearts and lives so that insofar as we as we do sin every day, we can find redemption, salvation, and acceptance in Jesus Christ. Let us stand and pray.